next episode is called Growing Pains. This next episode of 2150 begins at Joe's house just before time to leave for class. Uh, let's see, it's almost time to get to class. Ah, check and see if my lunchbox is right. Yep, it's packed. Books ready. Tape recorder off. And I guess that's just a... Huh, I wonder who that is. Just a second. Oh, hi, Chunker. Yeah, what's up, Joe? What brings you by this, this time of the morning? I was just about getting ready to leave for school. I was just wondering if I could ride with you in your hover car. Maybe we could get some fellowship. Come on, Joe, stop looking at me funny like that. Chunker, I'm still having difficulty getting over your coming to the Lord. Now, I thought you said that the Lord can do miracles. You've been telling me that for years. And when he does do a miracle, you act surprised. Oh, yeah, you got a point there. I had a question about some. I think we got about five minutes before we have to leave. Well, I guess we got a little time. What is it? Why don't you come on in? <laughs> Thank you. What was your question? It had to do with... Here, let me... These tapes. Music tapes? Yeah. Here, have a look. The Death Adders? Yeah, that's the name of one of my favorite groups. Well, what about it, Chunker? Look at the titles to those songs. Chunker, what are you showing me this for? I know what kind of music you listen to. Uh, not anymore, bro. I I came home from school yesterday and I sat down to listen to this tape. It's my favorite tape. And I put that thing on and it, it just about ate me alive. I started listening to that turkey and I felt so dirty in my heart. I felt like I had funnels stuck in my ears and someone was pouring mud or cow manure into my ears and into my brain. Oh, gross. It didn't used to be that way, Joe. What's this other tape? Now, that's another one of my newest tapes. Here, put it on. Chunk, I'm not sure if we've got time. Just for a second, Joe. All right. I want to know if you're getting the reset, you'll get the same response as I've been getting all of a sudden. Go. Is that the music that you're talking about? Yeah. That's music? That's just what I was going to ask you. Do you th really think that's music? More than that, do you think that's music that the Lord Jesus would, would be pleased with? Well, I have a question for you, Chunker. Do you have peace in your heart about that music? And that snake music you were just telling me about? I already told you what that does to me. Besides feeling dirty, when I get done listening to that music and then I try to pray, I feel just like a, a kid who's done something wrong and then tries to go up to his dad to ask for something. I feel guilty in my heart. Chunker, I think you've answered your own question. Anything that you do or want to do that you've got doubts about like that, don't do it. When it comes to the Christian walk, if something you're doing is making you feel uneasy in your heart before the Lord, even if it's something the Scripture doesn't specifically talk about, don't do it. Does it say that in the Bible someplace? Yeah, in Romans chapter 14, the last part, it says, Happy is he who does not condemn himself and what he approves. But he who doubts is condemned if he eats, because his eating is not from faith. And whatever is not from faith is sin. That means that if you're doing something or allowing something in your life that you don't feel right about, even if nobody else seems to think it's wrong, don't do it. I've been through this music thing myself. You, Joe? What do you mean, me, Joe? Of course! I'm a man like you are, subject to temptations and all kinds of other junk the devil will try to throw to me, if I don't look to the Lord. But I used to have s certain pieces of music that I didn't figure there was anything wrong with them because it didn't have words to it. But every time I'd listen to it, I'd feel uneasy in my heart. And finally, the Holy Spirit convicted me to the point where I just got rid of them. I don't know why he said or indicated for me to get rid of it in my heart. And my job at that point is just to obey. Oh, boy, I've got hundreds of these tapes. What am I supposed to do with them? Well, you could bring them in a big sack to school and let the teacher incinerate them. 
Oh no, I don't know if I got the guts to do that. Well, Chunker, you just told me yourself when you sit there and listen to that music, it eats you alive. It makes you feel miserable. You've got a mountain of misery in your house. Are you going to let it rule your life or are you going to get rid of it? But you have to go to the Lord and, and get it right between you and him, which he wants you to do with those tapes. One thing's for sure, I can't keep them. Well, I sure appreciate it, Joe. I just wanted to find out if what was going on in my heart is the same as which what you would tell me, and it is. It, it confirms. The truth is I've already been praying about it, and the more I pray, the stronger the conviction is that I should just get rid of them. Well, the only word I can say to that, Chunker, is obey. We better get to the classroom before the teacher gets rid of us. Oh, yeah. Come on, let's go. Uh, meanwhile, at the school... Bob, is that a firecracker I saw you stick in your algebra book? Oh, you sure are nosy. Why don't you be quiet and mind your own business? Uh, uh, I'm gonna tell the tea kettle. Uh, Fripp, I wouldn't mess with him. He's got firecrackers. Uh, uh, I got technochloride toothpaste. Uh oh, look at that over there. If you dare tell the teacher, you'll know pyrotechnical vengeance, my friend. I think Fob has degenerated into a pyrotechnical mad scientist. You guys, look at that over there. Eh, look at what? Nothing can come up against me and my... <gasps> You're kidding. Yeah, that's who I think it is. But, but, uh, I, I thought they sent him back to school system number six. What's he doing here? I don't know. Hi, you guys. Uh, hurry, get to the classroom. I think the second bell's about to ring. Hey, that looks like Zack. What's he doing here? That's what I was just wondering. <laughs> Doesn't look like he's in any hurry to get into this chair. Uh-oh. All right. Well, Instructor Android, I see you have been repaired. Yes, I have. It took a good part of the night for the programmers to come up with a small, compact program module to handle the new chunker. Yeah, teacher, I didn't mean to cause any trouble. Don't worry about it, Chunker. I could almost say that my system's crash yesterday was delightful. Instructor Android, that is illogical. Mechanical devices are incapable of experiencing delight. Skorzik, sometimes I wonder myself if you've got... I won't say it. Yeah, then you'd have to send yourself a nugget. I can't send myself a nugget. Anytime I do, it bounces off and hits something else. What I'm trying to say is that I'm delighted as much as is possible for a mechanical device to be to see this change in you, Chunker. All right, you. You. Yeah, you talking to me. If you want to get my attention, you call me by Zach. Get up here. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, what is it? I've got a surprise for you. Oh, class, you will all, I'm sure, remember Zack. He spent a short time in his classroom some time ago. Yeah, I remember that character. Yeah, you and me are gonna talk about it later. Was that a threat, Zack? Yeah, I didn't say nothing. All I said I was gonna talk about it later. Well, uh, as fate would have it, so to speak, I did such a good job of disciplining this character that the higher heads above had decided to transfer him permanently to this class. What? Oh, oh no! no. Oh, great! That's all I killed. There's nothing but trouble with a capital T. Okay, okay, that's enough. Yeah, teacher, where's my surprise? Here, have it. <laughs> Sure made him holler. Yes. It's a new improved ray. It's a ray that I will not use except on him and the likes of him. What is it, teacher? It's a ray that produces three times the pain the normal ray does. It's absolutely agonizing. I knew he was coming to the school system and that Amicron had done very little to help him. I had to get clearance from the highest heads above to use that kind of a pain ray on him. Well, that's creepy. Like I said, none of you have to worry about receiving that ray. Get up, Zack. 
Before you ask, I did that for two reasons. Number one, you were not in your chair when that second bell rang, and you were being pretty snotty about it. And number two, that is a little introduction to this class to let you know that I will tolerate no guff from you. Get in your chair. You've got that assignment on the board. One complaint and you'll get that ray again. <laughs> yes, sir. Teacher, doesn't that come under cruel and unusual punishment? Uh, may I remind you that Zack did pull a gun on me and tried to blow me away a while back. He could have just as easily done it to any of you students. The punishment is fitting to the crime. In fact, it is kind of lenient compared to what he tried to do. Brother, look at that. Zack got his book out. He's doing his assignment. Of course. All right, let's move on. As you all know, we were not able to finish the delicatology class that we had yesterday. And you all somehow miraculously got out of eating a crock of plob cylinders. Yeah, I guess that's my fault. I caused you to crash, if you remember. Chunker, don't worry. It's not held against you. It was not an intentional act. Also, we didn't get to go on that field trip. It's back on my desk again. I noticed that too, Instructor Android. That little box with a funny button on it. I think it's about time I got to the bottom of this. Let me see. It's just got a button and what looks like a door on the top, but I, there's no way to open the door. Hmm. Why don't you push the button, teacher, and see what it is? Yeah, I may as well get to the bottom of it. This is like a check in the box. <laughs> Yikes! Man, that thing fired a shot of sulfur right in the teacher's face! <coughs> Instructor Android, are you okay? <coughs> uh, my intake ports are clogged with sulfur. <coughs> An exploding jack in the box. That takes the cake. <coughs> you ain't just kidding. We've been having <coughs> nothing but trouble with practical jokes for the last week or two. <coughs> Boy, that stinks. Yes, of course, it's sulfur. <sighs> I'm gonna scan this jack-in-the-box to see if I can find any fingerprints. Maybe we'll finally get to the bottom of this. Hmm. I can't find any fingerprints on this. Whoever's pulling these tricks is pretty slick. Ah, come on, teacher. What's wrong with a few practical jokes? Well, there's nothing wrong with safe and sane practical jokes outside of the classroom. But the ones in here have not only been getting more frequent, they're getting more dangerous. <laughs> Joe, could you come up here and take this yucky jack-in-a-box and toss it in the garbage? Okay. Man, this... Somebody made this thing from scratch. Or it looks like they modified it from a regular jack-in-a-box to explode. Joe, I didn't ask you to analyze a goofy thing. Put it in the garbage, will ya? Yes, sir. What's the... What is it? <laughs> what is going on over there? Teacher! Something hit me in the face! <laughs> what? That's weird, teacher. It looks like a bunch of spit wads came out of the garbage can and hit Joe in the face. <laughs> That's what they are. Yeah, that hurt, too. What in the world? What is this in the garbage can? Boy, somebody's sure going to some elaborate lengths to play tricks on people. Instructor Android, what is the nature of the device you have discovered in the refuse receptacle? Why don't you just say what's in the garbage can, Skorzik? I'm not sure. It's some kind of a device rigged to fire a multiple battery of spit wads all at once at whoever opened the garbage can. Yeah, like my face. Man, Joe's face is covered with loogies. <laughs> I know that, Bob. This is getting ridiculous and downright serious. Teacher, I'm not hurt. It just kind of surprised me. Those things peppering my face didn't feel good. Go ahead and get in your seat. I figured so. No fingerprints on this either. 
It may be a little harder to catch this character than I figured. <laughs> Teacher, I'm getting paranoid. Yeah. Now tell him what might happen. Yeah, I'm afraid to open anything or sit on anything, take anything out of my desk, get a drink, or anything else. Now tell him what might fly, explode, come unglued, or dump on me. Or explode in your face? I bet Pyro's behind these practical jokes. He's the one with the fireworks. Uh, no, wait just a minute, Bob. You're the one with the fireworks now. Yikes. And I've got suspicions about you. Yeah, but you don't have any proof. I hear you repeatedly boasting about how your fireworks will rule the universe. That's the silliest thing I've ever heard. Well, everybody get in your chairs. We've got an assignment to do. I've noticed that Zach's been really quiet. Like I said, uh, a little bit later after Delicatology. Okay. I guess you've all had plenty of time to sample and try all the different combinations of your Datro Imbabulo Tonkripify Dore Mealy Boodle Slabs. And you all seem pretty, uh, pleased with it. We could never say that name. Well, that's why we call them Mealy Doodles for short. Boy, that sure beats that crock of plob cylinders that we almost had to eat last week. Did anybody get to eat any of those plob cylinders? Skorzik did. <clears throat> yeah, and he didn't even bat an eye while he was eating them. That's why we have all got suspicion that he has, uh, he's... Never mind. You better never mind. All right, are there any questions on this uh, batch of stuff for delicatology? Well, there's the bell for lunch. You all may begin vital absorption. Like I said, I'm not an amoeba. Oh, uh, I might remind you, we do have a field trip after lunch, so be ready for that. Uh, a little bit later on the lunch break, the Chunker is trying to share his faith with one of the students. Uh, but I'm not interested, Chunker. Listen, bro, if you don't accept this gospel, you're gonna burn forever, you know that. But, but... No buts about it. Forever is a long time, Turkey. And I don't want to see you burn for that long, so either you accept this gospel of the Lord Jesus, or I'm gonna... Oh, oh hi, Joe. Chunker, what are you doing? Joe, would you call this gorilla off of me? Chunker... <laughs> Am I doing something wrong, Joe? Chunker, you can't pound people into the kingdom of God. Yeah, but just this morning I read the scriptures where Jesus himself said to compel them to come in. And in my lifetime I found out that Knuckles speaks louder than niceties. Fob, I apologize. The Chunker's just learning about the Lord. Yeah, 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 I know. I don't be surprised if both of you hear from a couple of my agents. Agents? Yeah, he's talking about his firecrackers again. This guy's nuts about firecrackers. I almost think the demon of firecrackers that left Pyro went into him and brought ten more worse than him into him. I can tell you've been reading the scriptures. Later, Goose. Fob, I'm sorry. Oh, no. Chunker, you can't win somebody to the kingdom of God by force. You have to go to the Lord with a broken heart, asking Him to lead you to the right people to share with. Yeah, maybe you're right. I started sharing with Him nice, and, and I could sense the Spirit of God moving. But He started to reject it and, 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 and call the gospel ugly names, and I got upset. At that point, Chunker's best just to back off and, and wait until another time. Because your flesh came in and took over. That old nature, that old Chunker came in. And it rose up. You need to spend some time on your knees, brother, to ask the Lord to break that stuff. To cleanse you. To enable you to witness and to share your faith in a way that'll, that'll bring people in. With love. And it's true, oftentimes, oftentimes love is very firm and insistent. But you need the wisdom of the Holy Ghost that you may know how to speak to each person in a tailored way. But, Joe, he's gonna burn in hell forever if he doesn't accept... Chunker, I know that. But the approach that you are using is gonna do nothing but hasten his voyage to that awful place. You're turning him off to the Lord Jesus. I don't mean to do that. What should I do, Joe? Just like what I said, go before the Lord and ask him to give you wisdom. Ask him to cleanse your heart and your motives to make you a fit vessel to witness and share to take care of those, those other feelings that come up. 
I just gotta tell people about... about what I've found. Well, Chunka, that's wonderful. You should. It takes time to learn how to walk in the Spirit and, and be fully obedient. Did you spend time in prayer this morning with the Lord alone? Uh, not really. Maybe a little five-minute prayer. Prayer is the backbone of the Christian walk, along with the Word of God, the Bible. You need to spend every day just pouring your heart out to the Lord and reading His Word. Every day before you go about your the daily business of your life. Huh. I mean, you've read the Gospels through already. No, I haven't had time. I've only read the book of John. Well, you know from reading that that even Jesus himself spent time alone with the Father in prayer. If he had to do that, how much more do we? Yes, you're right. I can't really jump on you too hard, Chunker, because I did kind of the same thing right after I got born again. I was so anxious to tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ that I almost became... I did. I became obnoxious about it. I had the right motive and the right heart, but the wrong methods. But, Chunker, you're growing, and so am I. It'll be a lifelong process. It sure is great knowing the Lord. Now I've got somebody to go to if I don't understand algebra problems or my chemistry. You ask the Lord to help you with your math? Well, why not? The Bible says to cast all of your care upon him. And I'm sitting there by myself with this big old ugly algebra equation in front of my face. I can't understand it. Nobody to help me, so I just ask the Lord, and, and he opens my mind to it. You mean you got your homework done last night? Of course. I hope that doesn't cause the teacher to have a systems crash. Well, if you don't mind, I'm going to eat. Okay, me too. Oh, look out for the red chili burros in that food dispenser. They're dynamite. My eyes were watering for the first half hour of class after lunch yesterday. Thanks for the warning. Uh, later in the classroom, just before the second bell after lunch. Hey, what's this on my desk? I have something on my desk. Hey, who put this funny little book on my desk? Books all over the classroom. I have one on my desk, too. This looks like a track. I wonder who put all of these little religious books on the desks. All right, greetings, class. What? Where'd this little book come from on my desk? Teacher, they're all over the classroom. Let's see, it says, How to Find God by Charles Finney. Somebody's putting religious books all over the classroom. Joe. Teacher, I didn't do it. I've shared with just about everybody in this classroom. I don't need to be putting books in people's desks and everything. Uh, I did it. Oh, so it's you, Chunker. I just want everybody to know how wonderful the Lord is and to warn them about the judgment to come. Every one of you guys is going to be there. But those who accept the Lord Jesus will enjoy a wonderful time with him in heaven forever. Well, Chunker, I guess that's all right. Except that Joe has pretty much already canvassed this classroom. All of us are pretty well aware of your beliefs. It isn't enough just to be aware of it. you got to do it. Grrr, firecrackers, bombs, I'm gonna put them in your lunch sack, I'm gonna put them in your locker, I'm gonna put them in your desk, I'm gonna... Bob, are you threatening the chunker? Uh, uh, who, me? Of course you. Not another word from you. All right. Chunker, I do appreciate your attempt to better this classroom with your spiritual means. I wish all the rest of this classroom would believe like you and Joe and these others. But every person's got their own free will. But anyway, why don't we just move on? As you all know, we are going on a field trip today. A couple days ago, in our science class, I discussed the peculiar mutant variety of a local beetle that was changed by that antimatter test explosion several years ago. The luga lilies, the giggling granite, and the other unusual formations or mutations, as you know, are likewise a result of these antimatter bomb tests. And today we're going to go collect the uh, amperoid beetle. All right, I want you to go ahead and come up here and get collection containers, canteen, and uh, assemble in the transport chamber. Uh, Kodo. <gasps> Me, teacher? Yes, you. Do you have to sneeze? 
No, teacher, if I did, I'd be outside. I don't want to go to Amacron. All right. Also, here's a little warning for all of you. When you come up here to pick up your equipment, be sure to include a pair of rubber insulated gloves. This mutated beetle is like the electric eel. It's capable of delivering a really good jolt. It's not enough to kill, but when, when it lets you have it, you'll know. So don't try to pick one of them up without the tongs or the gloves. They'll give you a good jolt if you do. Okay, everybody come on up here. Oh, no. I don't want to get zapped by these bugs. This sounds kind of dangerous to me. Come on, you guys, don't complain. These bugs won't hurt you as long as you use the tongs and the insulated gloves. Okay, everybody step into the transport chamber. At their destination. by one of those bugs. Okay, we're here. Like I said, Luke, you don't have to worry about being zapped by those bugs as long as you take precautions. Me, I ain't afraid of any little bug. Zach, I suggest that you use your tongs and put on your rubber gloves right now. You didn't even bring any! Yeah, like I said, I ain't afraid of any bug. I've been stung and bit by everything that, that flies or crawls. You haven't been bit by a black widow spider, have you? Yeah, on the foot. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, somebody's nose is growing. Yeah, what was that, Chunker? Yeah, Zach, you lie like a rug. Yeah, it only happened a year ago, and it laid you up in bed for three days. Hey, man, Chunky, you're supposed to be supporting me. I don't lie for nobody. Uh, uh, um, attention. Uh, sorry, teacher. Here is one of those bugs I was talking about over here on this rock. Everybody come over here and have a look. Well, that doesn't look very impressive. Yeah, it looks like one of the stink bugs. To capture one of these bugs and put it in your container, you take hold of it with the tongs, just so. <laughs> Make it some funny noises. I like the looks of that thing, teacher. I didn't ask you to like the looks of it. You were asked to collect three of these and put them in your containers without getting nailed. Okay, you're on your own for an hour. <clears throat> they look just like those stink bugs. But they're kind of shiny. Yeah, here's one right here. Hey, man, look at that. Zach, don't touch it without your gloves. Hey, you're pansy. Man, ain't scared of nothing. Nothing's gonna intimidate me. I'll grab it if I want to. Get back. But... <laughs> hey! Brother Zach took a swipe at Joe. Let me see this bug. <laughs> yeah, this ain't doing nothing to me. Hey! <laughs> Zach, are you all right? Yeah, of course I'm all right. I'll get you clowns later. Man, that bug popped blue fire right in his hand. I didn't know those bugs could deliver that kind of voltage. He's running pretty good. Evidently, he's all right. I am going to be sure I use the tongs. Yeah, me too. Well, I'm going to go looking. Hmm. Oh, hi, Jim. What you got? Shh. I think I got one. Jim, what are you doing? Oh, Joe. Oh, that, oh, that. Joe, that hurts terrible. Oh. oh, I forgot to use the gloves, Joe. Oh, I'm so used to picking up rocks and other things on these field trips. Oh, I feel like I grabbed a hole of red hot steel. Let me see your hand. Oh. That doesn't look bad. It's just a little red. What's going on over here? Did one of you grab one of those bugs? Without the gloves, teacher. Yes, we did. Jim did just a few seconds ago. You gotcha, didn't it? Oh, teacher, oh, my head hurts. He'll be okay, won't he, teacher? Of course. Those bugs mainly just deliver high voltage with very little amperage. It more hurts than anything else. I'll bet you won't do that again. Yeah, teacher, I don't want to go near these things again. You are required to collect three. Use your tongs and gloves next time. Yes, sir. Uh, a little bit later during the collecting. Hey, yo. Hi, Chunker. What you 
What you doing? Uh, I just got done collecting my quota of bugs. Yeah, the teacher told me that tomorrow we're gonna dissect these things. Carefully. I hope with insulated utensils. Uh, you got all yours collected, huh? Yeah. Oh, hi, Jim. How's your hand doing? It's the strangest thing. My hand doesn't hurt at all. It's almost like it never happened. It's not even red anymore. Of course, I did pray and ask the Lord to heal it. Oh, that reminds me, Joe. I gotta tell you something. Oh, what is it, Chunker? Well, I did ask the Lord into my heart, and he came in and he saved me. And he gave me a hunger for the Holy Bible. And he's given me a desire to do what's right. I've decided I'm gonna burn all of that junk, that uh, junky music that he tells me to. I'm gonna stop going with some of the friends I used to go with. He's given me a whole new mindset. I don't even want to associate with those characters anymore. All they do is cuss and talk dirty and drink. I'm even having to throw away some of the videos that I used to watch. Really? What was that? I know, I heard it too. <laughs> I heard it too, but there's nobody here. That's the strangest thing. Well, maybe I know what it is. The guy who made this tape, he recently got married, and that was probably his wife talking in on the tape. Oh, well, that's neat. Anyway, what I was saying... Chunker, you're right about all of that, and it's good to be obedient. But keep in mind, walking with the Lord Jesus Christ isn't a bunch of don'ts. It isn't a negative, boring religion. It is true that everybody who gives their heart to the Lord in one way or another are going to have things that they'll have to give up. The Lord will have changes to work in their life. But I found out that any time I obey, any time I give something up for the Lord, He always gives me something back, much better, sooner or later. Well, I know that, but I want to tell you something that happened that day that I had that terrible sickness. The day that you told me you prayed for me. Huh. What happened, Chunker? Remember when the teacher told you guys that my heart had actually stopped beating? Yeah? Joe, something really weird happened. What's that, Chunker? Well, even though my heart stopped beating, Something really weird happened. I heard one of the guys say something about my heart stop beating. And, and, and then I saw him. Saw what? Things. Horrible monsters and they were coming for me. What? They took a hold of me. They, they, they dragged me down this dark tunnel. Down to where the... Joe, there were flames down there down inside of the earth. Joe, what do you think happened? I don't know, Jim. It almost sounds like hell. That's exactly what it was. When I saw it, I knew what it was. But, but then I heard, I heard you guys. You were praying for me. And next thing I knew, I, I was back in the hospital. Us praying for you? We were praying for you. But, but how could have you heard that? Joe, it must have been the Lord in his mercy. Well, I'll tell you what, I've never been so scared in all my life. I mean, those were real flames, bro, I saw down there. And I saw the lost screaming in agony. In fact, it was more real than this reality that I'm living in right now. I saw it with such clarity like I've never seen anything. And the one impression that formed in my mind was I gotta get right with God. And as I sat in that hospital after coming to, I became overwhelmed by my, my utter worthlessness and sinfulness. Uh, um, Chunker, I assume that was because of all those things you did? I mean, you've been incinerated more than any other student in the classroom. Bob, that was just the result of what was in my heart. My sin was that I rejected Jesus Christ and did not believe on him. And all that other junk that I used to do and trouble and everything, that was just a result of it. But I sure want to thank you guys for praying for me. Jim, you, and Joe, and, and Pyro. 
Fob, if you want to stay out of a devil's hell, you better get right with God right now. I'll see you guys later. I, I'm getting out of here. Chunky, you scared him off. I think he needs to be trembling in his boots. I know you three guys have been Christians for a long time, but I know you've never seen hell. Woo! Now I know why you were acting the way you were in the hospital, wanting us to come right away. Yeah. Chunk of the Lord sure loves you. He loves you enough to show you, to warn you, in an extraordinary way that most people never get. Now he's going to do something really neat with your life. Yeah, but I sure got a lot of problems. See this? Yeah, it's a black eye. I was wondering where you got it. One of my old buddies gave it to me because of my turning to the Lord. My attitude, I'm going to follow the Lord Jesus even if nobody else on this earth does. He's cleaning me up and doing wonderful things in my heart, even if some of them hurt. I mean, bro, it hurts to have to destroy a thousand dollars worth of music. But Jesus Christ is worth it, isn't he? Yeah. It's either him or that music, and that music doesn't stand a chance. Amen, brother. It was me or my firecrackers when I gave my heart to the Lord. You should have prayed for Fob. He's got the firecracker itch now. He thinks him and those silly cylinders can control the universe. Well, Chunker, I think we better get on back to the Transport Central. Yeah. Uh, a little bit later at Transport Central. Okay, looks like just about everybody's back. Oh, there's Zack. Zack, get over here. Yeah, I like it over there when I feel like it. I feel like it, I feel like it. Get over here. Yes. Where are your bugs? I didn't collect any. Why not? Yeah, I feel like it. You've got an automatic F for the day. Yeah. Oh, and am I or am I not mistaken that you took a swing at Joe today? Yeah, where'd that turkey do rat on me? No, I saw you from a distance. Don't forget I've got telescopic eyes. He got my way. <laughs> Man, my ears are hurting. Mine too. Well, you sure hollers when you hit him with that ray. Well, it hurts three times as much as normal. Well, it looks like he'll be on good behavior for another 24 hours. Okay, did you all find the bugs that are uh, required? How many did? Raise your hand. Mm, just about everybody. What about you, Frib? <laughs> I was attacked by hush puppies. Why didn't you dribble your basketball? <laughs> because I didn't have it. Well, a golf ball would have stopped them. Not the kind I got. They're made of horseshoes. All right, that's enough. Everybody's here. Activate transport beams. Uh, Kodo. No, teacher. I don't have to sneeze. Very good. All right. And that's the end of this episode. <laughs>